People are fundamentally interested in hockey as Canadians. We actually know very little about the early years of hockey. Here's the stick. This will be the first forensic study of hockey sticks that has ever been undertaken. This could change the history of hockey and the story of Canada. My name is Dr. Linda Howey and I'm an archeologist. I specialize in the scientific analysis of ancient artifacts. A client called and asked me to corroborate the early dates for two very old hockey sticks. You know, every time I open this case, I still get excited about what's inside. I was amazed when I saw the sticks for the first time that they're so very different from modern hockey sticks. You don't see a lot in photographs where there's actually bark on them. So there's something unique um, about bark. Both of the sticks are very old. One dates to the late 1700s, and the other one dates to the 1840s. We know that because they've been uh, subjected to carbon-14 dating by Laval University. This suggests that they were steam bent. Oh. So in order to steam bend a stick into this shape, you'd have to be using greenwood. I immediately wanted to know more about the sticks and what they could tell us about that time period. Today we're focusing on the older of the two sticks that dates to the late 1700s. And we're taking it to St. Joseph's Healthcare in London and we're gonna put it in a CT scanner. Linda came to me to, to get involved with this project because I do a lot of CT scans to look at archeological artifacts. It is not normal to put a hockey stick in a CT scanner. The reason why we're doing that is because we want to get detailed interior image into the stick to look at. We want to find out uh, if there's evidence that the stick was made by steam bending and uh, if there's ev any evidence that we can see of tool marks that will tell us something about how it was made. So you can see the image starting to come off here. Yeah, so you can see so the these are the individual wood. slices. The radiocarbon dates suggest can give you a date of the wood, but that doesn't, it could just simply be a piece of old wood that somebody made a stick from. The first thing we did was create a three-dimensional model of the stick. And in particular, we were interested in what was going on at the bend. Wow. You can really see the rings there. As soon as the images start coming up, it was immediately apparent that there seems to be something going on in that bent portion. So the rings are getting packed together here. You've got compression here and tension here. So the, the significance of, of it being steam bent means that it was made within about a year of the tree being felled, which means the radiocarbon date is the, the real date. So it's an old stick, not just a stick cut out of an old piece of wood. So we can now say with confidence that this is the oldest documented hockey stick in Canada. So next we went back to the, th the three-dimensional model to really have a good look at tool marks across the blade. But we also noticed what looked like impact on the blade itself, which may have been from hitting a puck. See the indentation? Wow. There. Yes. We were like, oh, you know, because maybe we'll get some sort of idea when we analyze their mo the morphology of the indentations, some sort of idea of what they were actually hitting with the stick, because there's a lot of debate on what they were using as pucks during these early time periods. Moving our focus up the shaft, there are two areas where it looks like the stick was being held, probably where the, it was being worn away by the person holding the stick and presumably playing a lot of hockey. That is cool. And if that's what it was, then it was somebody with a right-hand shot who was hitting on the left-hand side of the blade. It tells you about the person who owned the stick. It meant that stick was used a lot by that person. They really enjoyed playing hockey, so it personalizes the stick. As we were going up the shaft and looking, we saw these like kind of inconsistencies that it's like, well, that looks like there's something going on there. And we decided this, this might be worth looking at under UV light. and allows you to see things that you can't see with your naked eye. Oh, wow. Look, right there. See it? Mm -hmm. Holy cow. And lo and behold, we popped in under the UV light, and what did we discover? That there's a stamp there. Looks as if it's almost like shield-shaped in mm. here. Maybe something regimental, which would mean that there's a military connection, but the shape of the stamp could link into, say, oh, this was a cavalryman, or this was an infantryman. And so we can learn something very, very personal. It's a huge deal because we don't really know anything about hockey and what was and how it was played during the late 1700s. There is definitely some sort of perhaps writing or or markings that are happening just above it. So this is just the first step in the analysis that can be done to really make that stick more alive. The fact that it's uh, that you, it's visible with this light suggests that you're looking at something organic. Yeah. It seems that every time we've uncovered a new bit of information, a thousand questions uh, have cropped up, and that's really exciting. 
Olympics, it was done with like some sort of writing implement like a quill pen or something like that. It's not just about hockey, it's about the history of Canada and what we stand to learn about ourselves.